and we got a flag over on this side of the field. Huh? Illegal procedure against Watson. Tigers made it on the old play. Illegal procedure indicated against
Jim Phillips back in. He went down. Jim, good looking for it. They go 80 yards. Four first down. 14 plays. And uh, showed a lot of energy. They do a lot of things out there. That quick call. Right. You were talking earlier about Emory Bouloir.
think all that rain yesterday would have that much of an effect on the field. Uh, it looks fairly dry, but he hit a soft spot in the turf there. Oh, now, now that pass play to the that's a good pass play. It's one of those timing things where somebody catches it uh, just in time.
Stephen and Smith. Carriers come out again now. Flying to the left side, they bring Danny Gray. And they have the win left by Gray Blank. Bradshaw this time riding it off from Lenny Best. Best gets across the 45 to the 43 yard line. Really and he's got up a left point. Leading the way was Jeff Davis. Oh, right. Jeff Davis. Mark at the 43 of Lutz and Worth will be second down, seven yards to go for the carry. They have not experienced problems with the football thus far. And uh, basically, every free football in an opening quarter, Jim, uh, both teams have played. Uh, Lutz and Worth will be second down, seven yards to go for the carry. They have not experienced problems with the football thus far. And basically, every free football in an opening quarter, Jim, both teams have played. Lutz and Worth will be second down, seven yards to go for the carry. They have not experienced problems with the football thus far. And basically, every free football in an opening quarter, Jim, both teams have played. Lutz and Worth will be second down, seven yards to go for the carry. They have not experienced problems with the football thus far. Well, this year, Scott, they have that two six-point quarter along the sideline. And it really is like that was there. Dodgers in possession of the football in 
motion comes Gilliard from left to right. George goes back to throw. He's got Gilliard wide open deep. Jerry was the to the He had actually slowed down. He looked back and didn't see anything. Slowed down. I believe that one would have gone for six if Gilliard not had it. That's why he looked back at the left side. I think the nearest defender was about seven or ten yards uh, away from him. Jordan keeping across the 40 to the 39, and again his feet went out from under him, and Jordan goes down at that point. Had a good lead block from McCall that time, who had worked on that linebacker, and Homer just could not maintain his feet. In fact, they rolled his knee touchdown back outside the 40. So it's now going to be third down at eight yards to go for the Tigers. It's the second time today he's had trouble making that. Tuttle goes wide to the right side, and he's going to be our 
there in the eyes. Homer Jordan now sets the bound again. This time it's back to throw. The flip of the tunnel. Great grab. Oh, he couldn't hang on. Perry had the ball thrown just a little behind him, and he reached high into the air and had it for a split second, but it slithered off his fingers. And it is now fourth down. Patterson is there to cover for the Terriers. And Richard Henley this time will come on to punt for the Tigers. I think uh, Tubb is dissatisfied with himself. I think he maybe thought that ball was catching. It was thrown very hard, hard and a little high and behind. Renfro and Moore back in twin safety. Henley's punt will carry over their heads and into the end zone. So Richard Henley hits a punt of 40 yards. And the ball will come out to the 20-yard line now where it will be first and 10 for the Terriers with a minute 46 remaining in the first quarter. And the score tied at three here at the Valley this afternoon between Wofford and Clemson. You know, that we talked about question marks maybe being in the kicking game, but... Uh, Quite a battle going on for the punting duties on this squad, and uh, it's, uh, I'm sure, a nice problem that Danny Ford likes to have. All right, set to go now. Wide to the left side comes Taylor. They have Lang a wing to the right. This time they give the Lang on the reverse. He comes out over the 25, Lang out to the 26, 27-yard line before he is pulled down. And Wade Lang, who has been running tough, a 190-pound junior standing 5'10", Almost ran over Terry Kennard before Terry could wrestle him to the ground at the 27-yard line. Second down, three yards to go now. David Moore comes wide to the left side. Lang again will wing right. Bradshaw takes out, gives this time to Gaines, sweeping to his right. Gaines comes out near the 30, crosses the 30 to the 32-yard line, and is finally hit there by Tim Childers. Strong safety for the Tigers, but it's another first down for the Wofford Terriers, who offensively this afternoon have been able to move well with the football. A lot of imagination, a lot of different sets, a lot of different looks. They've done quite a few things out of that wing bone, and they've, they've had a little trouble moving the ball. Wide to the left side comes Danny Graves. Lang again, lines up as a wing, he'll work from the right. Now goes in motion wide as Bradshaw takes out and a whistle prior to the start of the play. They may get a delay of game here. 25 second clocks in use here, Scott. Mm -hmm. They will be uh, mandatory next year, but the Tiger officials decided they would get a jump on it, put the 25 second clocks up. They've been there through practice, the team now uh, oriented to the fact that they know they must get those plays off within the allotted time. I got a feeling that's going to be a big, big help both to the quarterback and also to the officials. Uh, that will be used this year in all league games. Is that correct? Uh, it will be used in all games, but in conference games, the opposing coach has to agree to use it. Uh -huh. All right, it's going to be first down. That was not a delay of game. I, I don't know what the whistle blew for there, but uh, it's still first and ten from the 32-yard line. As, again, Bradshaw brings him out. He's keeping, trying to pitch back. He does get it back. It's off to Lang who sweeps wide to his right. Boy, somebody really leveled on Bradshaw just at the point of the pitch out. And I believe that may have been Jeff Bryant who got to him. And then tracking down Lang on the corner was Andy Hedden. And they spill him out of bounds at the 33 after a pickup of one. It'll be second and nine. I don't know how he got the pitch off. Sure. I think it was just literally knocked out of his hands. When he was hit, the ball just squirted free. He was really popped. We have reached the end of the first quarter of play. And the score here at the Valley after one quarter, Clemson three, Wofford three. Ken, let's go back to the phone line. It sounds better than the Marty. There's too much buzz on the Marty. Go back to the phone line.
At the end of one quarter, the 1981 football season well underway. It's the Tigers three, the Terriers three. Both teams scored on their opening possessions. Field goals, of course, and that's what we have going into the second quarter play. Wofford in possession. Second down, nine for the Terriers. Ball at their own 33-yard line. They bring Lang in motion from right to left. Bradshaw takes out. He's rolling to his left. He's looking to throw. Now firing over the middle. This one is complete out across the 40 at the 42-yard line to David Moore. And coming up from behind was Terry Kennard to knock him down, but it looks from here to be another first down for the Terriers. And is out of the 43-yard line. There is nothing wrong with Charlie Bradshaw's arm. Boy, he zipped that one, didn't he? Let's say something about that offensive line. They have done a job for the Wofford Terriers. Certainly have. Another first down for Wofford. They're winning the battle in the first down race. Of course, the score even. But they've rolled up some yardage here in the first half. Danny Gray's wide to the right. Lang is a wing left. He comes in motion to the right side. This time Bradshaw's riding it off to uh, Gaines. Sweeps wide to the left. Gaines out across the 45. Gets the midfield into Tiger territory at the 46-yard line. Finally knocked down there, but it'll be another first down as William Devane finally got to him. And Wofford right now making Tiger fans a little ill around here, Scott. <laughs> There's some... Uh... A little bit of nervousness on this side of the field. They see this team, uh, of course, I think a lot of people underestimated Walker. They're a very, very good football team. They play five NCAA schools this year. And when you're NAIA, that's almost never heard of. All right, it's at the 46-yard line of the Tigers, where it now becomes first and 10 for Whopper. Here is Bradshaw on a double reverse attempt that time. They give the initial handoff in there, and then Lang was supposed to get it, but Gaines never got it to him, and he was knocked down immediately by Tim Childers for a loss back to the 50. They were both tackled, uh, tackled simultaneously, and that's about a four-yard loss. So make it now, second down and 14 for Wofford. The ball directly at midfield. We're just into the second quarter with 14-10 remaining. The score tied at three. Lang now is a wing left. He'll come in motion to the right side as they have David Moore split off right end. Bradshaw on a delay this time, giving off to Gaines. A flag goes down as he cracks over left tackle to the 42-yard line and is pulled down there. Up defensively was Jeff Davis for the Tigers. But a flag down on that play, and we have illegal procedure called against the Wofford Terriers here. That's going to nullify a pretty good game. They would have been uh, maybe third and five. This one's going to come back. That Tiger defense, obviously out there right now, Scott, saying to themselves, what has hit us here this afternoon? Really? <laughs> Wofford in white uniform with gold numerals, deep blue helmets. And the Terriers feeling very much at ease, apparently, here at the Valley before some 60,000. Right now, though, quarterback Charlie Bradshaw wants to talk it over on the sideline, so we have a timeout on the field. 13.43 remaining here in the first half of play, and the score at the Valley, Clemson 3, Wofford 3. Just moments ago, the Wofford Terriers had themselves a first down inside Clemson territory at the 46, but uh, a loss on a play on an attempted handoff to Lang set them back to the 50, and illegal procedure penalty set them back to the, uh, their own 45. So now they're faced with uh, a second and 19 situation. Charlie Bradshaw decided he wanted to talk to Buddy Sasser about it. And let's see what they came up with on the sideline. Well, right now, they're gonna split Lang out on the left side. Or check that. That is uh, not Lang. That's Menser, who is a wing to the right now. That may be Lang over there. Those numbers are a little tough to pick off. Here's a delayed handoff across the 50 into the 46-yard line goes Anthony Gaines as they come back with a draw play that time. After having a wide receiver to the left, Jeff Davis and Terry Kennard made the tackle. And the ball will be spotted at the Tiger 46-yard line, where it now will be third down and 10 for the Wofford Terriers. Well, that got the... Uh Lost on the running play and also the procedure penalty back, but they still have 10 yards to go. 
Mike Taylor is wide to the right side. Menzer is a wing left. He's in motion to the right as Bradshaw's up under center with a split backfield. Again, the delay. Handing off to Gaines once more, but this time getting to him is William Perry. Oh, a big 285-pound Perry brings the fans to life as he hit Gaines at about the 48 and drove him all the way back to the 40-yard line of Wofford. You know, you would think someone who weighed 285, 290 pounds uh, would not be that quick. He is quick as a cat out there. Chris Marshall is on the punt. Backed up deep is Billy Davis now for the Tigers. Marshall awaiting the snap at his own 38-yard line. Line of scrimmage is the Tiger 47. Gets the kickoff. Oh, good kick. Yes. Davis waiting, gathers it in at the 6. Swings to his left, comes up over the 10. Fights his way to about the 12, and that'll be it. So the Tigers will be backed up again to their own 12-yard line where they'll take over first and 10. And Hannah was downfield for Wofford to make the tackle. They'll try to get that offense cranked up. Uh, some bright spots. Uh, Homer had a couple of passes to Tuttle, one which was caught. The other possibly could have been caught. And Cliff Austin... Uh, showed a couple of bursts in the first quarter. Let's see what they do here. Kevin Max at fullback, Chuck McSwain at tailback, and jumping offside out there for the Tigers that time was Bubba Diggs, left end, the tight end. So that's illegal procedure for the Tigers, and it's going to set them back five yards. Last two possessions, they've been bumped back five yards on penalty penalties. Illegal procedure indicated the type of thing you hope you won't have on opening day is numerous mistakes. The Tigers have had a few out there. Not not to discredit Wofford. Wofford has run over the defense. It's been the offensive uh, possessions that have cost the Tigers. Tuttle is wide to the left side. Again, they line up in the eye. Ball is back to the seven-yard line. The ride this time is off to Chuck McSwain. He finds a hole of a left tackle and cracks out over the 10 to the 12, maybe the 13-yard line. And is knocked down there by Ronnie Ray, the right side linebacker. Tackle made by Ronnie Ray. Mark it at the 13-yard line, where it now becomes second down and nine for the Tigers. Magwood goes to the right. Second. Tuttle splits out left. Mack and McSwain in behind Jordan at quarterback. Homer rolling to his left, looking to throw, firing, incomplete, intended for Perry Tuttle, and Terry, uh, Perry tried to do a little down and out, and he slipped on the turf out around the 25. Tony Painter was there covering for Wofford. That was a little sideline route. Um, yeah, he just lost his footing when he tried to make a cut, and uh, a timing pass like that, it was well, well thrown uh, beyond him because of the timing. 12 minutes exactly left to go in the first half of the play. Third and nine. Gilliard to the right side, Tuttle comes left. Homer Jordan at quarterback has them in the eye. Homer takes out, keeps pitches out of the corner. With the ball is McSwain, and he's going to be knocked down shy of the first down as he comes up over the 20 to the 21, but that won't be enough. Pfeiffer Nicholson is there for the Wofford Terriers to make the stop on the play. Well, I say it won't be enough, but I notice on the spot of the ball they've moved it a little further ahead than I thought they should have. There, Scott. <laughs> Bring it in, Clip, placed on the 15. Let's, well, let's see. It's Homer. still a little shy. Homer's over to take a look. Yeah, you can tell from the reaction across the way. And quite a few Wofford fans here today, Jim. They sold better than 3,000 tickets. So it's going to be shy of a first down by a length of the football. It will be fourth down for the Tigers. And Richard Henley is on once more to do the punting. Backed up deep, Tim Renfro. And joining him will be David Moore. Henley standing back at the nine. Tigers got a pretty good spot on that ball because I was certain that he had gone down around the 21, and it was out closer to the 22 when they finally marked it down. Did appear that way, didn't it? Henley backed up, awaiting the snap now. Gets it. Here's his kick. Gets it high, about too deep. Coming up is Renfro. He'll fair catch at the 41-yard line, and that's where the Terriers will take over. First and 10, a punt of 38 yards by Richard Henley. So Wofford holding the Tigers once again. Clemson unable to get anything generated offensively in their last two possessions. 11-34 remaining in the first half, and we have a tie football game. It's the Terriers and the Tigers tied at three as Wofford now takes over the football once again. Brad Shaw will have Lenny Best in there along with Bernard Wilson this time in the setback positions. Taylor goes wide to the left side, and Lang will be a wing left. 
This time it is Lang on a reverse looking to throw, firing downfield, and he's got a man open down at the 45. That is his tight end, Dirk Derrick, and he is out of bounds around the Tiger 46-yard line as he circled back. He was chased over there by Kennard and lost about a yard after the reception, but it's enough for a first down Terriers at the Tiger 46-yard line. First down, Walker. Boy, they give you a lot of headaches offensively, don't they? They have three people in the backfield who can throw the football, and they're not hesitant about those backs circling around for them up there. David Moore goes to the left side. It will be Lang, who was a wing to the left side. He's in motion right now as Bradshaw again moves up under center, takes out, gives it off to the first man through. That's Wilson. He has hit at the line of scrimmage, and down he goes. Perry was there. That's uh, William Perry. The big 285-pound freshman out of Aiken. And he stops him at the 45-yard line. That defensive line beginning to assert itself somewhat now. Wofford, uh, Wofford being able to move the ball somewhat in the air and somewhat uh, to the outside, but straight up the middle. It's awfully tough right now. Second to go again. The Terriers. This time they bring Graves wide to the right with Lang a wing right. He goes in motion left. Bradshaw again sets him down with a split backfield. Rolling to his left now. Looking to fire. Over the middle he goes. Complete down around the 39. Knocked down back around the 41 is Wade Lang. He came in motion. They will rule that his forward progress was stopped at the 40-yard line. It will become third down. Four yards to go at that point for Wofford as Danny Triplett came up to make the hit on him. I have been watching William Perry the last few plays at nose guard, Jim, and uh, I don't know. I don't see how any center or combination of the center and the guard can move him in line. Mike Taylor is wide to the right side. Lang is wing left in motion right now. Bradshaw's back to throw. He has two receivers flooded out here. Flips a quick screen off the best. Best being chased around at about the 39, and down he'll go at the 39-yard line. They flood the right side with two wide receivers. Then Best curls out of the backfield and grabs the pass, but the Tigers stop him, and there is a flag on the play. Jim, the uh, the Tigers were giving the look of a blitz that time, and someone may have been at uh, Nope, looks, it would appear it's going to go against Walker. Indication here is motion against the Terriers that time. Well, the Tigers have a decision to make. Uh, They've made their decision. They've, yep. re they've declined the penalty. Right. It's going to remain uh, still about three yards shy of a first down, and it will be fourth down. So Wofford will call on Chris Marshall to do the punting, and again, Billy Davis will back up now for the Tigers. Exactly 10 minutes to go in the first half. Three to three ball. Waiting to snap is Marshall. Has it. Here's his kick. It's a deep. It's going to go on into the end zone and out of the end zone. It'll come out to the 20-yard line now. That's a 38-yard punt. And it will be first and 10 Tigers now at their own 20. Let's get 15 seconds for station identification on the Clemson Football Network. Here at the Valley, a 3-3 football game. Homer Jordan sends Gilliard wide to the right side, brings Tuttle split out left. Homer this time is racing to his left, looking to throw, going deep downfield for Tuttle. Perry's there. Got it. 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown! That is the ones the Tiger fans have waited for this afternoon. And let me tell you something. Not only did Perry Tuttle do a job of losing defensive corner Tony Painter, but did Homer lay one in there? Jim, when that ball was barely 15 yards out of Tuttle's uh, or Homer's hands, the only question remained was whether Tuttle would catch the ball or not because he had easily beaten the defender. Uh, he caught the ball, never had to break stride at about the 25, and from then on, it was no contest. Bob Pauling will attempt the point after his kick is up. His kick is good. An 80-yard touchdown pass play. Homer Jordan to Perry Tuttle. Timeout on the field to score the Tigers 10, Wofford 3.
beautiful reception. Homer Jordan to Perry Tuttle, and Jim, as I mentioned a moment ago, the only question was whether Perry would catch the ball. Well, that was his 100th career reception here at Clemson. He has now caught a ball, I believe, Jim, uh, 21 straight games. Tuttle has caught at least one pass in. You know, he's the only guy who scored on a touchdown pass play for Clemson last year, and thus far is the only to do it this year. <laughs> Which is not to slight the other receivers because Clemson has a talented four of receivers. On the other hand, Jerry Gilliard has toiled for three years without ever grabbing a touchdown pass. I get a feeling he'll get one this year. It's uh, 10 to uh, 3. The Tigers on top by 7. Donald Igwe Buike to kick off. Back to his uh, the receiver now for the Wofford Terriers. That is Renfro at the 2, up over the 5, the 10, the 15. Gets to the 20, out to the 23-yard line, and down he goes around the 24-yard line. As downfield was Anthony Rose leading the charge for the Clemson Tigers. 100 career receptions now for Perry Tuttle of the Tigers. And it was a big one, an 80-yard bomb from Homer Jordan and Tuttle, who was streaking down the near sideline, heading to the west, gathered it in in stride, and no one was near him. Well, they say he's not quite as fast as Jerry Butler, but you couldn't tell it on that play, could you? He was flying. Taylor wide to the right side. They go from the straight wishbone this time. The handoff is to the mid-back, and that is Wilson, and he is hammered hard and then sprints off of there and gets outside and crosses the 30 to the 31 where Terry Kennard brings him down. So mark the football at the 30 two-yard line, 33-yard line make it. It's going to be a couple of, about a yard shy of a first down. It'll be second down for the Terriers. Wide to the left goes David Moore. Again, they work from a straight wishbone offense now. Bradshaw quarterback up under center takes out. This time rides a straight ahead. A flag goes down as Wilson carries for the first down out across the 35. But that flag thrown in there, Benish and Devane were there to make the stop for the Tigers. Going to get a holding call against the Wofford Terriers here. That's going to nullify the first down. Also going to be a very costly penalty for Wofford. Yes. You know, we're not coaches, Scott, but we've seen this happen so many times. Wofford working extremely well out of the wing ball. Mm -hmm. Then Clemson comes up with the big bomb, the big play that gets these fans excited, and suddenly Buddy Sasser has become conservative. He's back to the wishbone. Yep. I don't know. They were doing so well, and uh, Lang is such a good all-purpose back. He can run, he can throw, he has good speed. Now, here comes the wing bone again now. Yeah. Lang will be to the left side. Graves will be split off right end as Lang is in motion left to right now. A 10-3 to football game. Tigers on top. Hand off to the deep back. That's Gaines. Gaines straight ahead. Crosses the 25 to about the 29-yard line and is hit there by Jeff Davis. So 8.20 remains in the first half of play. 10-3, the Tigers on top in this game. It's going to be third down and five for the Wofford Terriers. The ball at their own 29-yard line. So one play has uh, broken open a pretty tight ball game, three to three. Both uh, teams scored on their first possessions, field goals, of course. And Clemson comes back to the ball. Here's Bradshaw rolling to his left, being chased, firing over the middle. It's going to be incomplete and almost intercepted out there around the 37-yard line. It was intended for Wade Lang and Tim Childers leaping into the air, got a couple of fingers on it, but couldn't contain it. And it is now fourth down to the Wofford Terriers at their own 29-yard line. Well, the fans beginning to get into the game a little bit. They've been fairly quiet here in the first half, uh, with the exception of the big bomb and the 52-yard field goal. Billy Davis backs up deep for the Tigers. Chris Marshall on now to do the putting for Walker. Awaits the snap. There's the kick. Oh, did he oh. hit a beauty over the head of Davis? Sends him in retreat back to the 13. Picks it off there, out to the 15, the 20. Davis turns to the sidelines and is out of bounds around the 24-yard line. What a punt that time by Chris Marshall of the Wofford Terriers. That punt covered about 60 yards, the way I see it. What do you say, gang? We didn't have the stopwatch on it. It had to be up in the air about five seconds. Yep. 
I don't know. They were doing so well, and uh, Lang is such a good all-purpose back. He can run, he can throw, he has good speed. Now here comes the wing bone again now. Yeah. Lang will be to the left side. Graves will be split off right end as Lang is in motion left to right now. A 10 to 3 football game. Tigers on top. Hand off to the deep back. That's Gaines. Gaines straight ahead. Crosses the 25 to about the 29 yard line and is hit there by Jeff Davis. So 8.20 remains in the first half of play. 10 3. The Tigers on top in this game. It's going to be third down and five for the Wofford Terriers. The ball at their own 29 yard line. So one play has uh, broken open a pretty tight ball game, three to three. Both uh, teams scored on their first possessions, field goals, of course. And Clemson comes back to the ball. Here's Bradshaw rolling to his left, being chased, firing over the middle. It's going to be incomplete and almost intercepted out there around the 37-yard line. It was intended for Wade Lang and Tim Childers leaping into the air, got a couple of fingers on it, but couldn't contain it. And it is now fourth down to the Wofford Terriers at their own 29-yard line. Well, the fans beginning to get into the game a little bit. They've been fairly quiet here in the first half, uh, with the exception of the big bomb and the 52-yard field goal. Billy Davis backs up deep for the Tigers. Chris Marshall on now to do the putting for Walker. Awaits the snap. There's the kick. Oh, did he oh. hit a beauty over the head of Davis? Sends him in retreat back to the 13. Picks it off there, out to the 15, the 20. Davis turns to the sidelines and is out of bounds around the 24-yard line. What a punt that time by Chris Marshall of the Wofford Terriers. That punt covered about 60 yards, the way I see it. What do you say, gang? We didn't have the stopwatch on it. Had to be up in the air about five seconds, too, Jim. He got tell you, Davis looked like Willie Mays going after He <laughs> turned with his back to the line and took off. The ball is spotted at the 24-yard line, where it's first and 10 Tigers. Tunnel again wide to the left side. Gilliard's a slot. Magwood goes off right in. Jordan has them down in the eye. Austin, or no, that's McSwain at tailback. Takes the pitch out. Comes out over the 30. 35, and down goes Chuck McSwain around the 36-yard line. That should be enough for a Tiger first down. Chuck McSwain did not get much practice this ball. He was hampered with a, a muscle pull. Cecil Clark that time caught him and hauled him down. They were marking at the 35-yard line. Kevin Mack at fullback, McSwain the tailback from the eye. It's first and 10 Tigers at the 35. Tuttle is wide to the left. Hilliard is a slot left. Stock still is split off right end. The give again to McSwain comes out to the 40, and down he goes at the 40-yard line as Chuck picks up five more yards. Good first down yardage. Not something the Tigers are beginning to get. On that first play, it's what coaches love to see is uh, four or five yards in that first play. It makes play selection so very much easier. Magwood now will split off right end. Tuttle again left. Gilliard again slotted left. Mack at the pullback. McSwain the tailback. Homer Jordan the quarterback. Pitch back to McSwain. Chuck slipped down as he tried to turn the corner that time and gets back to about the 39, and that is all. It's going to be third down and six for the Tigers. Well, there must be... Scott, uh, an underlying bit of dampness on that field because we've seen players from both sides thus far slip down as they tried to make their cuts. Yeah. We had some heavy rains over the past few years. Yeah, you again wide left, Gilliard again slotted left, Stock still goes right. Homer Jordan, the quarterback, on third down and six from the Tiger 39. Homer back to throw. Gets time. Looking, firing over the middle. Tuttle's got it. First down at the 45. Look at to the right side at the 40. Into the 35. Perry Tuttle finally wrestled out of bounds in at the 32-yard line by Tim Renfro. So Perry Tuttle with reception 101 on his career. And that one carrying into the 32-yard line of Wofford, a 29-yard pass play. 5.58 remains in the second quarter. 10-3, Tigers on top. Tunnel out for a breather. Getting back to the turf. Yeah, Jim, you can see some divots out there. All right, Magwood is wide to the right side. Stock still flanked left. This time the ride is off to Kev, or Jeff McCall, who is back in the fullback, and he crosses the 30 to the 27-yard line. Hit there by Curtis Patterson, the free safety of the Terriers. Tackle made by Cecil Clark. Ball marked in at the 
27 yard line of Wofford. Second down, six yards to go for the Tigers. Kendall Alley is in. He's wide to the left side. Kevin Mack and Cliff Austin are the running backs. Magwood is out to the right side. Here is the pitch back to Cliff Austin. He's across the 20 down to the 16 yard line. Cliff Austin running beautifully out there that time, stepping out of the arms of one would-be tackler, then finally pulled down by Tim Renfro. The first to get to him was Simpson, but he couldn't contain him. Illinois and Pittsburgh, no score after one. Georgia, Tennessee, no score after one. Youngstown, three. Cincinnati, nothing after one. My hometown. Austin McCall are the running backs now. Here's Cliff Austin again. He gets a couple, moves to the 14. He was stood up pretty good at the line of scrimmage that time by one of the linebackers stepping up in there, Ronnie Ray. But Cliff managed to fall forward for a couple of yards, so it'll be second down and eight from the 14-yard line of the Terriers. Well, it appears the offense is beginning to get into the flow of the game a little bit. Uh, play selection has been excellent. Kendall Alley is in. He's wide to the left side. Everybody else is in tight now. They work double tight ends in this situation. Alley goes in motion from left to right. Homer Jordan, the quarterback, taking out. Homer keeps. He's at the 10. Fights his way to the 5. And Homer Jordan, touchdown! A 14-yard scampering broken field run that time by Homer Jordan, who certainly a Gamstock showed that quickness of foot. Oh, he is something, isn't he? Very, very quick feet, and uh, once he broke the uh, line of scrimmage, from there on, it was it was Homer's touchdown run, 14 yards. We're ready to hold. It will be Pauling attempting the point after. The kick is up. The kick is good. There is time out of the field with 4.23 left in the half. The score here at the Valley, Clemson 17, Wofford 3. Six yards, eight plays, three first downs, and uh, that was a good-looking drive, Jim. I figured it out here right now. So far, the score is Homer Jordan six, Perry Tuttle six, Bob Pauling two, and <laughs> Mr. Ibwe Buike three. I'm gonna, <laughs> Coach Ibrahim's gonna be on with us at halftime. I'm gonna have to get him to uh, tell me the pronunciations of some of those names. Uh, soccer season has already opened up, and of course, uh, he'll be talking about the Clemson Invitational, which is coming up very, very soon. And uh, we'll talk a lot about soccer. That'll be at halftime. Tim Best, who is a younger brother of Lenny Best of the Wofford Terriers, is now in on the receiving team, and he is backed up two yards into the end zone. Meanwhile, it's going to be Bob Pauling who kicks off this time. So Danny Ford is really substituting his kickers in and out. Donald Igwe Buike kicked off twice, and now Pauling will kick off for the first time. Pauling has kicked the extra points. There's his kick downfield. It's going to be best at the 2, 5, 10, 15, up the middle to the 20. That's out to the 25, out to about the 28-yard line, and down he goes at that point. Let me get a running start at this. Igwe Bikwe. Is that good? <laughs> Something like that. Okay, he apparently uh, has not been getting enough height on the ball on the kickoffs, and Pauling does get the ball a little higher, which allows your uh, coverage team to get down a little quicker. All right, uh, Johnny Rembrandt. Rembrandt made the tackle there. Georgia has just scored now in the first quarter at 7 0, the Dogs over Tennessee. Bradshaw brings them out in the pure wishbone now. The ball at the 28-yard line of the Wofford Terriers. Tigers on top, 17-3. The ride this time is off to Lenny Best. Cracks over left tackle, moves out to the 30-yard line, and that's about as far as he'll go. As William Perry and Dan Benish were there. They have marked it at the 31-yard line. You know, Jim, if that fullback were to back up another half yard, that would be like the old straight T formation. They had both ends tied that time. All right, set to go now. Wide to the left goes Mike Taylor. A wing to the right side this time. And that is Wenzer. Now he's in motion wide right. 
Bradshaw is back to throw, going deep over the middle and firing. It is caught by Windsor inside the 50 at the 48-yard line of the Tigers. Coming up defensively was Hollis Hall, but Windsor, who was the wing back in motion, peeled back over on a crossover and was wide open at the Tiger 48 for a first down terrier. Charlie Bradshaw can throw the football. That was as uh, well a thrown ball as you'd ever want to see. Right on the money to Windsor, and it's another Wofford first down. So the Terriers at the Tiger 48 now. We'll send David Moore wide to the left side. They'll work Wenzer as a wing to the right. Bradshaw sends Wenzer in motion to the left side now. Bradshaw digs out, backs to throw. Now he's going to be handed and going to be thrown for a loss back at his own territory at about the 47-yard line. Andy Hedden was the first to get there, and Joey Glenn coming from the opposite side defensive end. They wrestle him down back at the Wofford 47. A loss of five on the play. It'll be second down and 15 for the Terriers. You know who else was in on that big? William uh, Perry. I, I saw that huge orange object that covered <laughs> about a third of the middle of the field out there. I wondered what it was. Wide to the left goes Danny Graves. Again, wing left is Wenzer. He's in motion to the right side as Bradshaw has them down in a split backfield. Takes out. Bradshaw rolling left, looking to throw, firing quickly, incomplete, out there in the left side. The intended receiver was Danny Graves, but it was thrown off the money, and the Tiger defensive front is starting to get a little pressure on him now, Scott, yeah. forcing him to throw off the wrong foot that time. So that's going to make a third down and uh, long. In fact, in the neighborhood of 15 yards, 225 left to go first half. Clemson on top, 17 to 3. Third and 15 for the Terriers. Taylor is split off right in. Wenzer will be a wing to the right side as Bradshaw splits his backfield again. Back to throw once more. Looking over the middle and firing this one incomplete. Thrown behind the intended receiver, Taylor. And once again, William Perry was coming straight up the middle along with Triplett. And between the two of them, they were just too much for Bradshaw to really set up and throw. Suttle was back. Block, as big as he is. Billy Davis back. Chris Marshall the punt now for Wofford. Marshall standing at the 32 awaiting the snap. Gets his kick off and hits another beauty. Davis will retreat back to the 5 and gather it in there. Now comes out to the 10. Sweeps wide to his right. And hauled down and his tracks at the 9-yard line. A punt that time covering 48 yards as Chris Marshall has demonstrated a good leg here. He only kicked for a 35-yard average last year. And they said it was a disappointing year for him. He was a much better punter. He's proving that here today. I got a feeling he spent the summer kicking a few. Uh, good coverage that time by Wofford, too. They had a bunch of people down. Marked at the 10. McCall will be at fullback. Cliff Austin, the tailback. Tuttle comes wide to the left side. Gilliard is right and out. Er, Gilliard is a slot. And out to the right goes Magwood. Gilliard's in motion from his slot now. Homer Jordan back to throw. Again, he is looking for Perry Tuttle deep. The ball is intercepted down at the 38-yard line, and picking it off was Tim Renfro. And we have a flag on the play, and I think that Perry Tuttle is going to be called for reaching up and grabbing the face mask of Renfro after he made the reception, or the interception. What amazed me that time is how much time Homer had to wait for Tuttle to try and break free. It seemed like he stood back there a good five seconds. Just waiting for Tuttle to break free and never quite did. Good coverage by Wofford. The flag and the ball both are lying at the 34-yard line. I believe that the infraction occurred at the 36. Crowd today, 60,000 here at the Valley to witness this game between the Wofford Terriers and the Clemson Tigers. Penalty stepped off now from the point of the infraction, the 32-yard line. will move into the 49 of the Tigers, where it'll be first down Wofford. Perry that time never really began his normal sprint. It was almost as if he kept looking back, waiting for Homer to release so he could run to the ball. And Perry, in fact, looked a little disturbed with himself, especially after the flag had been thrown against him. Mike Taylor splits off the right side. Again, Lang is in at the wing back now. Bradshaw takes out, gives it to Lang on a reverse. Now he's going to throw wide open out there inside the 35 is the tight end, Dirk Derrick, and down he goes to the 33-yard line as Tim Childers hauls him in. So again, the abilities of Wade Lang, who was a quarterback, as he works from that wing position and rolls left to throw and hits 
Dirk Derrick for a first down at the Tiger 33. Reminiscent of the old triple threat type uh, quarterback. He can do everything. Run with the ball, throw it. Been a real spark plug for the Wofford offense today. All right. Down goes Wofford now. Pitch back. Again, it's Lang. Rolling to his right. He's going to run with it this time, but he's going to be hauled down right around the 33. Didn't get much as Jeff Bryant came up defensively that time. Lang faked as if he might throw. I don't think he had intentions of throwing that time. He tried to pull the defense uh, off balance a bit. Quick play here by Wofford as the clock is running down under a minute now. Bradshaw's back to throw. Quick dump out on the right side. Throws it out of bounds to stop the clock with 55 seconds remaining. Arthur Yex was the intended receiver. But Bradshaw stopping the clock, I don't think he really intended to get it into the hands of Yex. He wanted to stop that clock, and so it's spotted at the 33, where it will be. Third down, 10 yards to go now for the Wofford Terriers. And they're, I believe they want timeout, Jim. They do. They want to discuss it. Wofford asking for a timeout here to stop the clock, and with timeout on the field, the score, Tigers 17, Wofford 3. Scott Shannon with Jim Phillips back here at Death Valley on a beautiful day for football. Over 60,000 people looking on. The Grassy Bank is full. Uh, of course, the upper deck above us uh, full. And a good contention of Wofford fans across the way. Very tight football game in the first quarter play. Three to three at the end of one quarter. And then the Tigers have sort of broken it open. Problems containing a very good Wofford offense. All right, Taylor goes wide left. Menzer's in at the wing now on the right side. He goes in motion left as Bradshaw has them down. The ball at the 33-yard line of the Tigers. Bradshaw back to throw, looking deep, now being chased out of the pocket. From behind, Perry couldn't get him, and finally pushed out of bounds down around the 27-yard line, and getting to him was Andy Hedden. William Perry that time was really in pursuit but couldn't get him. Or Jeff Bryant, I beg your pardon. He's, he's 66 upside down. I get right. that 99 and 66 confused sometimes. I think he's uh, three or four inches taller than uh, the nose guard, Perry, too. They're both big. Oh, huge. Jeff goes about 260. It's going to be fourth down for Wofford, and they're going to attempt a field goal here as Don Hairston's on. The kick will be an effort of 44 yards. It will be Lang holding at the 34 from the right hash mark. The spot, the kick is up. The kick is going to be wide to the right and is no good. And so the Tiger defense holds here. And with 42 seconds remaining in the first half of play, Clemson will have the football. They hold a 17-3 lead over the Terriers at this moment. So Clemson once more will get their hands on the football as it's marked now at the 27-yard line. I'm interested in seeing those halftime stats, Jim, because I think we might see, as far as total offense, a fairly even uh, total. Tuttle goes wide right. Gilliard is slotted right. McCall and Austin in the eye, and Magwood's flanked off the left side. Here's Jordan back to throw for Gilliard. Jerry with his first reception of the afternoon to the 30, 35, and out of bounds at the 37-yard line. He did not get out of bounds. I beg your pardon. He's hauled down there. It's 29 seconds remaining in the half. Tigers are lined up over the ball quickly. It's going to be second down and just shy of a first down by inches out there. You don't suppose Homer would rear back and uh, let's see. Well, he's rolling to his left, looking to throw. Looking for Magwood. He's got it, and he's out of bounds in at the 46-yard line. Did he have his feet inbounds when he made the catch? That's the question. Yes, he did. And we got a flag back down here, Jim, uh, at about the 36-yard line. So the clock stop now with 14 seconds first showing in the first yeah. half of play. Tigers leading at 17-3 to three over Wofford. And they are discussing it down here in the midst of the uh, Tigers. It's going to be illegal procedure against illegal Clemson procedure. so that pass play is nullified that play nullified by the illegal procedure will bring it back and deduct five yards that will carry it back now to about the 32 yard line 
So 14 seconds remaining here in the first half of play. Magwood is wide left. Gilliard is a slot left, and Tuttle goes out by himself, split off right end. Homer Jordan bringing them up. McCall along with Austin. Homer rolling left, looking to throw. Firing over the middle, and he was hit as he threw, and it's intercepted, and pulled down from behind is Tuthill, who intercepted it at the 45-yard line. As Homer Jordan was unloading, he was hit back there, and the ball went like a crippled butterfly into the hands of Tuthill, and Wofford quickly asked for a timeout with two seconds left here in the half. Well, they got time. I think field goal's probably out of the question from here, but uh, they got time to get one off. I'll tell you, though, uh, I don't know how good a leg that Hairston has, but it's not inconceivable that he could kick one from that distance. It would have to be 60 yards or yeah. so, but... Maybe they'll uh, let Lang try to throw another pass. He's done everything else this afternoon. Of course, Bradshaw throws the ball very well, has a strong arm. They might go for seven. You just like... never know about soccer-style kickers, how good their leg might be. Here comes Hairston. He's got the kicking tee with yes, him. Yes, he does. So they're going to attempt a field goal here with two seconds remaining in the half. And this is not exactly a chip shot, folks. It's going to be about 59 yards. Well, he's got a little bit of wind behind him. It's coming out of the west just a bit, a slight breeze. So they're going to spot it at the 49-yard line. This will be a 59-yard attempt. Holding will be laying. It's from the hash mark left. Well, Clemson doesn't believe uh, they're going to try this. Nobody's back there. They, well, they're playing a normal defense. Yep. There's the spot. He does kick it. He gets it high, but not nearly far enough. It's going to fall short about two yards into the end zone. And we have reached the end of the first half of play here at the Valley this afternoon. After the first half, the score, Clemson 17, Wofford 3.
Scott Shannon back with Jim Phillips. We're ready to kick it off. Wofford, uh, of course, had the option at the beginning of the game. Clemson has the option to start the second half, and the Tigers elect to receive. Uh, we'll take a look at these stats as soon as time permits, too. Once again, the voice of the Tigers, Jim Phillips. Harrison's kick to begin the second half. Back is Kevin Mack. He's got it at the 2. Up over the 5 to the 10 to the 15. Cuts out to the 20. Fights his way to the 25 and down at the 27-yard line. So Kevin Mack with a 25-yard return. The second half is underway here at the Valley. The Tigers leading at 17-3. to three. White was there for the Wofford Terriers. First half stats, very interesting. Wofford, 12 first downs. Clemson, 9. Wofford, 101 yards rushing. Clemson, 100. Passing yardage. Clemson with a slight advantage there, 134 to 100. But you got to remember, 80 of those came on one play. McCall, Austin in the I formation. Gilliard is to the left side. Here's Homer Jordan. Back to throw as Barry Tuttle races down the right side. Jordan on the run. 30, 35. Jordan out to the 40 and across the 45 to the 47-yard line. Homer Jordan rolling to his right, looking to throw, decided to tuck it in and go. He did. Jerry Gilliard with a big block over there on the corner. And the Tigers have a first down. They've marked it at their own 46-yard line. Perry Tuttle in the first half caught three passes, 125 yards, and one touchdown, of course. All right, Stock still is in. He's wide left. Magwood splits off right end. Again, McCall lines up with Austin. Austin gets the call. No gain. He is hip hard as he crosses the 45 to the 46. Kirk Breland is there. Defensive left tackle for the Wofford Terriers. Just into the second half of play. Clemson on top in this game by a score of 17 to 3. Tigers got off to a sluggish start this afternoon. Wofford led it 3-0. Tigers came back to tie it. Then a long bomb to Perry Tuttle. Then Jordan raced 14 yards to a score, and that's the scoring as it's been. Jordan this time, quick down and out for Tuttle. Across the 50, into about the 46-yard line of Wofford, where he is knocked out of bounds by Tim Renfro. See where they spot the football now. It will be at the 45-yard line where they place it down. So the Tigers now will have third and one from the 45-yard line of the Wofford Terriers. Well, it would appear they're going to go back to the two tight end offense. Tuttle and Galliard both come out. Yep. Jim Worst is in there along with Bubba Diggs and a wing to the right side this time. Here is the ride off to uh, the tailback. That's Austin who dives straight ahead. I think he got the first down. He crossed the 44, and I believe he has enough for the first down. It is first down, Tigers, as up defensively was Barry Mason, a defensive end, and Piper Nicholson. So first and 10 Tigers at the 44-yard line of the Wofford Terriers. Tuttle goes wide to the right side. Magwood splits off left end. It will be Gilliard who is a slot to the right. Again, McCall along with Austin in the eye as Homer Jordan takes out. Jordan now quick throw. That is Magwood. He can't hang on at the 34-yard line. The ball was thrown a little low in defense of Frank Magwood, and he had problems getting his hands on it. Renfro was there covering it was right at his knees, and it sort of handcuffed him. He had his hands on it, but couldn't quite bring it back up into his belly. Uh, Danny just pats him on the head and says, it's okay, it was tough. It was a tough catch. 13-25 to go in the third period of play. 17-3, Clemson on top. Out they come now. It's second down, Tigers. Jordan this time keeping. He's only going to get one, and he is hammered down. Homer Jordan that time looked as if he may have missed a handoff to one of the backs there, and he pulled it back in and stepped up in there, but Breland met him and hauled him down hard at the 42-yard line. So now it is going to be third down and about eight for the Tigers at the 42 of the Wofford Terriers. Magwood goes wide to the right side. Tuttle comes left. Gilliard is a slot left. McCall and Austin in the eye. Here's Gilliard in motion from left to right. Jordan takes out, back to throw. He has time. He's going to run with it now. Homer at the 40, 35. He's got a first down as he fights his way to the 32-yard line. Homer Jordan rolling to his right again, looking to pass. And again, with the two wide receivers to the left side, that defense did not react, Scott, as he rolled out against it. And there was an opening there for him, and he took advantage of it. Bubba Diggs and Stock still getting back in. Gilliard and Tuttle coming out. Nope, Tuttle's going to, or uh, Gilliard's going to remain in. It's going to be Tuttle and Magwood coming out. Homer had 149 yards total offense in the first half. It's 134 of those through the air. Stock still left, Gilliard right. Straight up the middle goes Jeff McCall. He crosses the 30 to the 29-yard line. It's there that Kirk Breland comes up to make the tackle on him. 
So the pickup is three yards. It'll be second down and seven now. Magwood's going to get back in. This time, Gilliard checks out for the Tigers. Just into the third quarter, 12 minutes and five seconds remaining in quarter number three with Clemson on top 17-3 to three over Wofford. The Tigers received the kickoff here in the third quarter, and they've begun moving with it. Here is Austin. Finds a hole over the right side. He's at 25-20 down the sidelines and knocked out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Allen Tuthill caught up with Cliff Austin and bounced him out of bounds at about the 18-yard line. Had he not gone out of bounds there, he may have still been running. What is the uh, Rudyard Kipling uh, poem, If? <laughs> if he'd had two more yards in that sidelines, he was tight roping as best he could, but he had daylight. All right, stock still wide to the left side. Go yard will split off right in. Homer Jordan has them first down at the 18, gives them a call, hams are straight ahead, and crosses the 15 to the 14-yard line. At that point, he is met and knocked down by Barry Mason, defensive end of the Wofford Terriers. So the Tigers now break from the huddle as Magwood heads to the right side. Frank Magwood right, Jeff Stock still to the left, Homer Jordan the quarterback, they work from an eye, pitch back to Cliff Austin, Austin behind a block trying to get outside, can't get much however as he's bounced out of bounds at about the 13 yard line. Austin was doing a good job of following the blocker on the play but uh, Stock still couldn't take care of everyone over there and as a result Austin bumped out of bounds at the 13. They just kept stringing him out, stringing him out till uh, they finally bumped him out of bounds. Ronnie Ray was the man who made the defensive play. It's third down and five Clemson. Magwood goes to the right. Tuttle comes left. Gilliard to slot left. Homer Jordan at quarterback. Sends Gilliard in motion from left to right. Homer takes out. Gives off to McCall and Jeff fights his way straight ahead to about the 11 yard line and that'll be it. And it's going to be interesting to see if uh... well what do you think? Well, right now, it looks as though they may go with an offensive play here because yep. you know, they're going to ask for timeout, I believe. As I look down to the sidelines, I see the timeout being flashed, and that is exactly what we've got. So there is 10.51 remaining in the third quarter, and with timeout on the field, the score stands Clemson 17, Wofford 3. conservatism shown that time on a third down play Scott uh, mm -hmm. you may have been listening on the pregame show when Danny Ford indicated they've had problems with goal line offense over the last couple of years and they thought they might become more varied but they went back to the old tackle dive that time well with a 14 point lead here's a chance to work on it all right Gilliard's in motion from left to right Homer Jordan up under quarterback takes out rolling to his right on fourth down looking to throw firing and it is caught for a touchdown. <laughs> Frank Magwood did a beautiful job of hanging on with the toes on the sideline to grab it just inside the flag. Homer Jordan hits on his second touchdown pass play of the afternoon and that makes it a 23 to 3 football game. Beautiful job by Magwood. Pauling is on now to attempt the point after. He's two for two thus far on the day. I still don't believe he caught it, Jim. <laughs> An incredible catch, falling out of the end zone. There's the kick by Pauling in the air. The kick is good. There is time out on the field. The score, Tigers 24, Wofford 3.
Okay, we're back. 13 yards, 70, uh, or 13 plays, 73 yards. Uh, four touchdowns on the touchdown drive. The culmination, uh, Homer Jordan to Frank Magwood, an 11-yard touchdown pass. Hauling at it a point after. It's 24-3 now with the Tigers on top. Uh, that was not an extremely conservative call on fourth and short in the 11, Jim. No, it wasn't. They did open it up somewhat, and a great catch by Magwood falling out of the side of the end zone. It was just a question of whether his feet were in bounds, and obviously they were. Igwe Buikwe's kick, a flat one down the left side. It is going to be into the end zone and out of the end zone, so it'll come out to the 20-yard line, and that's where Wofford will take over the football first and 10. So the Tigers now have built up a lead of 24-3 to here in the third quarter with 10.46 remaining. Ball spotted at the 20. Wofford will now get their hands on it offensively for the first time in the second half of play. Out they come. Taylor is going wide to the left side. Wing to the right is Lang. They have Wilson and Gaines in behind. This time the ball is loose out there, but it's recovered by Wofford right around the 21-yard line. They got a break there. The ball slipped out of Lang's arm, just uh, almost through his arm. And luckily for Wofford, someone was there to pounce on it. But It was Jimmy Fowler, the right guard, who recovered the football. They've marked it just across the 20, but not far enough to call it a yard, so it's second down and 10. Here comes David Moore, split out to the right side. Lang will be a wing to the left as Bradshaw brings him in motion from left to right. Second and 10, Bradshaw takes out. This time it's back to Gaines. Gaines sweeping wide left out over the 25, moves out to the 28-yard line before Jeff Davis can haul him down. Gaines that time got to the corner and then exhibited his speed as he was able to get up to about the 28. And it now will be third down, two yards to go for the Wofford Terriers. Opening game of the season here at the Valley, a crowd of 60,000 on hand this afternoon to see the Tigers going against Wofford. As Bradshaw brings them out, straight wishbone, flags down. I don't know whether Wofford jumped or whether Clemson was guilty of encroachment. The handoff was to Wilson. All sorts of movement on that side of the line. Illegal procedure, Wofford is the preliminary call. So that'll cost them five, and it will set it back now to the 23-yard line. Next week, the Tigers are in the Superdome in New Orleans. They go against the green wave of Tulane. And our airtime around the Clemson Network next Saturday night will be 8 o'clock Eastern uh, Daylight Time. Looking forward to that. Yeah, going to be a nice trip. Isn't it? Never, never been to New Orleans. I never have either. We'll have to paint the town orange. <laughs> okay, we'll do Straight that. Straight wishbone, third down, seven yards to go. Bradshaw keeps, gets to the corner. He's out across the 25, but he's knocked out of bounds before he can get to the 30-yard line by Anthony Rose, who came up from his corner position. He is just shy of the 30-yard line, about six inches shy, and it's fourth down now for Wofford. I don't know whether Buddy Sasser would elect to gamble on this or not. Well, he's down by 21. Uh, There's no punter in there yet, I can nope. tell you that. Nope. They got eight seconds to get uh, this they're play They're going to go, yeah, that clock is ticking down. Four, three, two, the 25-second clock. They get the play off, and they get the first down. It is Lang, and he has run out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Just as the 25-second clock was ticking off, Lang took the direct handoff and scampers for a first down at the 41-yard line. Well, that's a big gamble there. But up to now, it paid off for the Wofford Terriers. Another first down for Wofford. Lang in the first half incidentally had uh, 50 yards uh, rushing, another 30 passing. Here's the wishbone again. Bradshaw this time, giving it off once more to Gaines, who tries left tackle, gets good yardage as he moves out across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Jeff Bryant was there defensively, along with Jeff Davis for the Tigers. They've spotted it at the 47-yard line, where it'll be second down, five yards to go now for Wofford. And the clock is moving with 8.45 left to go in the third period of play. Taylor comes out wide to the right side. Straight wishbone offense. This time, Bradshaw keeping, now pitching back with the football. It's Lang, turns his way up the left side and gets out near the midfield stripe and has bounced out of bounds again, this time by Jeff Bryant. 
Well, it's the 1981 football season. It is here. And 60,000 strong have come out to celebrate that fact here at the Valley this afternoon. This is the earliest opening date Clemson has ever played. Uh, the two previous early dates were September 8th. Clemson has never played football before Labor Day, but this year they will. Here's the wing bone, and the give is off to Lang, and nowhere to go as they tried that counter, and the Tiger defense smelling it all the way. William Perry and Danny Triplett were there, and they stood him in his track, so now it'll be fourth down, and Wofford will punt the football. Marshall averaged on five punts, 43 yards in the first half, and that includes that 59-yarder he had. Billy Davis backed up to the 10, awaiting the kick from Chris Marshall. Oh, they're going to get a roughing the kicker here. Yes, sir. Going to get a roughing the kicker here. Diving through there was Vandell Arrington. And you know, Jim, that was a 51-yard punt. Now, he booted it well, but Arrington with what will go down on the films as a glowing error. <laughs> you got to give up a few yards in front when you're coming from the outside as he was, and he went straight at the kicker and, and got Marshall across the leg. So that will give the possession of the football right back to the Terriers and give them excellent field position now inside the 40-yard line of the Tigers. It was not a vicious hit, uh, but it did the job, and Wofford gets the first down at the 39. Oh, here come the Terriers once again now. Taylor goes wide to the left side. They'll work with Menzer, a wing to the right. Menzer comes in motion far wide right now. Bradshaw's back to throw. He's being chased out of there, and down he goes. Good defensive play that time by William Devane, the middle guard, as he came up through and knocked Bradshaw down at the 43-yard line. Well, Devane came in for Perry, who's getting a breather. Perry has played an awful lot. He is that uh, highly touted freshman. All 285 pounds of him, but Devane has played quite a game today also. 7.24 left to go. Third period. Clemson on top, 24-3, but Wofford driving. Daddy Graves is wide to the right side. In motion now is Menser. Here's Bradshaw on a give this time to Anthony Gaines. Cracks over right tackle, and he's inside the 40 to the 38-yard line before he is pulled down. So they get back some of that lost yardage from the previous play. It'll bring about third down and about eight now. Defensively, Mark Richardson and Jeff Davis put the stop on him that time. Here comes Wofford out now. Wide to the left side, they send David Moore. Wing to the right side, that's Menzer. Here's Bradshaw, back to throw on third down. Has plenty of time going over the middle and is intercepted. Picking it off is Terry Kennard. Kennard carries out over the 35 to about the 37-yard line. David Moore made the tackle. Terry Kennard comes up with the first Tiger interception on the 1981 football season. And the Tigers take over first and 10 at their own 37-yard line. Jeff Bryant was coming hard that time, and right after Bradshaw released, he met Jeff Bryant. I tell you, Bradshaw threw the ball in a whole bunch of orange shirts. That pass was well, well covered. Tuttle to the left, Gilliard goes right. Homer Jordan sets them down. He has in the backfield Kevin Mack and McSwain. Here's a quick throw for Tuttle. Can't hang on out at the 50. Perry had to go on a dive for the football and couldn't quite come up with it. Tony Painter was there covering. He looks like he's shaken up, Jim. A little bit, but I don't think seriously as he heads back to the huddle. Okay. A few more stations. The Kerry Clemson football. WOLS in Florence. WRIX in Honeypath. WVAP in Langley, South Carolina. And WKMG Newberry. Hope you folks along the line are enjoying this afternoon's opener. Stock still is wide left. Gilliard is a slot left. Magwood splits off right end. Homer Jordan takes out. This time pitch back. This is McSwain with some running room. Gets out to the 43, but a good diving tackle that time by Curtis Patterson, the free safety. Just about the time Chuck McSwain looked as though he might break something, Patterson grabbed him by the ankle to spin him down. The play was there on the corner just a... Superb individual effort by Patterson. Kept that one going a long, long way. Six minutes to go, third period. Kendall Alley is in now. He goes wide to the right side. Hill yards a slot right. Homer Jordan, a quarterback. 
This time, handing it off to the first man through, that was Kevin Mack, and he dives across the 45 to the 46. He'll be shy of a first down as Ronnie Ray was there defensively for the Wofford Terriers, and now Clemson faced with a fourth down and one situation. And I believe we're going to see Dale Hatcher, okay. the much-heralded freshman putter now. Heard a lot of good things about him. Backed up deep, Tim Renfro. Hatcher hits it very high. Renfro calling for a fair catch, lets it hit oh. at the 10, and it bounces out of bounds at the 9-yard line. So Hatcher aims it to the corner and gets off a of beauty, backing the Terriers up to their 9, a punt of 45 yards. Well, would you say a couple of freshman kickers have made their marks today? Yes. <laughs> okay. You mean Igwe Buike and Hatcher? <laughs> Igwe Big Buike. I think by the end of the season I'll have that name down pat. I don't know as I ever will. <laughs> I'll call him Donald. Uh, he broke in with a bang, a 52-yard field goal. If you joined us a little late, and uh, it was, it did not just barely make it. It made it big, didn't yes. it? Yes. Bradshaw brings them out. They'll work from a straight wishbone now. He rides it off. No, he's keeping. Turns it up over the right side, but a good defensive job by the Tigers that time. They were smelling a keeper by Bradshaw. The first to get to him was Hollis Hall, and he had a lot of help out there. William Perry. Danny Triplett was also there. So no gain on the play. Well, give him a half a yard. We'll call it second down and nine. I'm amazed with Perry's mobility. He was out on the corner making that play from nose guard. Taylor goes wide to the left side now. They'll line up with Lang, a wing on the right. Bradshaw, this time giving to Lang again on that counter reverse. But I'll tell you one thing. The Tigers must have had some blackboard work on that play during halftime because... He gets a couple, and that is it, as Bryant and Jim Scott are there defensively. Mark it at the 11-yard line. It is third down, seven yards to go now for the Wofford Terriers. And the Clemson defense here in the second half uh, beginning to shut down the Terriers a little bit. Wofford uh, pretty much won the first half statistics, not on the scoreboard, but statistically they, uh, they had the edge. Danny Graves out to the right side. This time, again, they give to Lang on that reverse, and again, he is smothered, this time back inside the five-yard line. He was looking to throw, but he had no opportunity because Jeff Bryant, Jeff Davis, and Ray Brown were all over him, and they smash him down back at the four-and-a-half-yard line, where it is fourth and long now for the Terriers, and Marshall will back all the way up to the restraining line in the end zone to punt as Billy Davis drops back to receive for the Tigers. Marshall gets the kickoff. It's a line drive. Davis grabs it at the 49, or 44, to the 40, and in he goes to about the 36-yard line where down he goes, and up across for Wofford to make the stop on him was Ricky Loss. So the Tigers with excellent field position now as they have the football. They have spotted it at the 37-yard line of the Wofford Terriers. Big hand for the defense. Uh, they played extremely well. In fact, on the third down play, Lang wanted to pass, but physically could never get turned around and squared up to throw it. Kevin Mack, Cliff Austin in the I formation. Gilliard goes right, stock still is left. Pitch back. This is Austin. Across the 35 to the 30, down to the 27-yard line. And finally pulled down around the 27-yard line is Cliff Austin. Make it about the 28-yard line. Ronnie Ray and John Gant were there from the linebacker positions for the Wofford Terriers. So the Tigers come up short of a first down by about a yard and a half. Jim, I believe we're beginning to see some of that Clemson depth beginning to tell on uh, Wofford. Here's Stock still wide to the left. Magwood splits off right end. This time it is off to Austin again. He has the first down as he hurdles across the 25 into the 22-yard line. And at that point is hauled down as diving across was Ronnie Ray to make the defensive play. Two minutes, 43 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Tigers on top, 24-3. Stock still again, splits out to the left side. Gilliard goes wide right. I formation in behind Homer Jordan. Rides it off to Kevin Mack, the first man through, and he dives over the 20 to about the 19-yard line, and that'll be it as Barry Langrier, the defensive right end, is up for Wofford to make the play. A lot of very interesting opening games here today, September 5th. Uh, 
South Carolina has a tough opener against Wake Forest. Uh, Tennessee and Georgia, another tough opener. Alabama has to go to LSU to play tonight. And that's an extremely tough place to play. Worst and Diggs, double tight ends. Stockstill is wide to the left. This time Kevin Mack fumbles, and I believe Wofford recovers. Looks as though Wofford may have the football here. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe not. Homer Jordan getting up and off Homer the bottom. Homer Jordan yeah. got it, yeah. I'll tell you, I saw nothing but white around that thing. I don't know where Homer came from. He may have been a gopher digging a little trench <laughs> under the ground to get to it or something. That ball popped straight up in the air. Well, it's marked at the 14-yard line. And at that point, it'll be third down for the Tigers. Out they come. Homer Jordan has them down. Third and about two and a half. Pitch back. This is Austin. Turns the corner. First down and more as he's across the 10 and out of bounds near the eight-yard line. So a big first down there after a loose ball almost got away into the hands of Wofford. The Tigers maintain possession. They'll have it at the nine where it's first and goal. Robert Renfro forcing Austin out of bounds. Well, Perry Tuttle back into the game and uh, Scaliard out, I believe. No, stock still out. Tuttle comes wide to the left side. Magwood splits off right end. Kevin Mack along with Cliff Austin. Austin gets the pitch back, turns the corner. Beautiful job of running as he squirms out of the arms of one tackler and gets inside the five to about the four-yard line. Finally bringing down was Robert Renfro. Minute 19 to go in the third period of play. 24-3, to Clemson on top of Wofford and threatening again. Ball is nudged right up against the three-yard line. Second down and goal for the Tigers as they come out once again. Brendan Kreit will be a wing to the left side. They work from an eye formation. Homer Jordan takes out, keeps, turns, touchdown! Homer Jordan with his second touchdown of the afternoon stepped in with nobody near him that time. A three-yard scamper for six, and the Tigers move on top, 30-3 to three over Wofford. And on once again will be Bob Pauling to attempt the point after. Homer has had a great opening game. We're ready to hold, awaiting the snap. Here's the spot. Pauling's kick is up. His kick is good. Time out on the field. The score here at the Valley. Tigers 31, Wofford 3. Well, this last particular drive took a little over two minutes, about two minutes, ten seconds, to go 37 yards and seven plays, two first downs. Homer Jordan scored again from three yards out, and Pauling added the point after, so we have arrived at a 31-3 score. Donald Igwe Buike will kick off here as he places it on the tee at the 40-yard line. Back deep is Wade Lang now for the Wofford Terriers. All right, Igwe Buikwe has it set to his fashion on the tee, approaches, whoop, it fell off the tee just as he was coming up to it. One of the Wofford Terriers ran up and down the football immediately. It was his good headsy play, really. Although the football did fall off of the tee prior to Igwe Buikwe getting there. Well, this last particular drive took a little over two minutes, about two minutes, ten seconds, to go 37 yards and seven plays, two first downs. Homer Jordan scored again from three yards out, and Pauling added the point after, so we have arrived at a 31-3 score. 
Donald Igwe Buike will kick off here as he places it on the tee at the 40-yard line. Back deep is Wade Lang now for the Wofford Terriers. All right, Igwe Buike has it set to his fashion on the tee, approaches, whoop, it fell off the tee just as he was coming up to it. One of the Wofford Terriers ran up and down the football immediately. It was his good headsy play, really. Although the football did fall off of the tee prior to Igwe Buike getting there. That's enough for one whole name, let alone Donald. Reminds me of the days of the K. Kaiser Orchestra with Ishka Bibble. All right, Igwe Buike has it on the tee again. Lang is backed up deep again for the Wofford Terriers. Here's the kick. Oh, he hit a beauty. Driving oh. Lang all the way back to the end stripe in the end zone. It will be down. It will come out to the 20. It will be first and 10 for the Tigers at their own 20, or for the Terriers at their own 20-yard line with Clemson on top by a score of 31 to 3. 15 seconds for station identification on the Clemson Football Network. Barry Thompson has checked in at quarterback now for the Wofford Terriers. His handoff goes to the deep back that is uh, best, and he comes to his right and is knocked down at about the 22-yard line by Randy Cheek. Randy Cheek coming over from left linebacker, nailing Lenny Best as he tried to get outside. It's a pickup of two. It'll be second down and eight. I don't know if you got to hear any of the halftime or not, but Coach Ibrahim was... Uh I think just about as excited as Donald was about that 52-yard field goal. And that was the Major League kickoff just a moment ago also. Look down below us here, Scott. I see Mike Gaskew warming up along the Tiger sidelines. Yeah. Thompson now takes out. Thompson is back to throw. Looking over the middle and firing. It is incomplete out at the 45-yard line. The intended receiver downfield was Dirk Derrick, the tight end, who was open. He had split the defenders, but the pass a little underthrown. Billy Davis and Hollis Hall were there in double coverage. See, Barry Thompson, he's from an area high school, I believe. He's from, from Belton. Right, Belton Honeypack. Third down, eight now for the Wofford Terriers. Ball spotted at their own 22-yard line. Tigers on top, 31-3 to in this game. I believe you're going to see... Mike in a quarterback. Homer's already had a very, very good afternoon. Let him sit out, I guess, the rest of the uh, game. Graves goes wide to the left side. Here's Thompson on a handoff. This time it is to Lang, the wing back, and he counters this time out over the 25 to the 27. But again, Tiger defense doing a good job of stopping that wing back counter here in the second half of play. And it will be fourth down for the Terriers. They'll still have three yards to go for a first down. So Billy Davis again backs up deep. And Chris Marshall is on to do the punting for Wofford. Four and three. Marshall's least effective punt was the one he uh, kicked last time out. He is capable. They, they want timeout. Yeah, well, Wofford, that's, nope, the third quarter is in. Right. That's what it is. Okay. So time runs out. We have reached the end of the third quarter of play. And after three quarters, the score here at the Valley. Clemson 31, the Wofford Terriers 3. Okay, we're coming up on the fourth quarter. 15 minutes of football left to go. Clemson with a commanding 31-3 lead right now. 
And Jim, what we've witnessed, I think, in the past few minutes is that superior uh, bench of the Tigers. They're beginning to wear the Terriers down a bit. Ken Brown is back to receive now for the Tigers. Chris Marshall to punt. Marshall gets the kick off. Brown coming up under it at the 31. Starts to his right, cuts back up the middle to the 35, out to the 40, still on his feet to the 45-yard line. A 14-yard return by Ken Brown on a 37-yard punt. Ken Brown is a defensive back out of Hardwell, Georgia, just a sophomore. He's uh, the left-handed quarterback they recruited a couple of years ago, I believe. Yes. He came to Clemson as a quarterback, right. the left-hander. I don't know. Epley's the left-hander. Well, I, I think, think Ken Brown is, is Ken too. also? Yes. Okay, I didn't realize that. Jordan has McCall and McSwain in the eye behind him. Homer takes out, pitch back. This is uh, uh, McSwain turning the right corner, coming over the 45 to about the 48-yard line. Alan Tuthill there to pull him down. You know, I didn't realize that Kenny was, was a left-hander. He never did perform at quarterback here, and I guess never having seen him out there throwing the ball... I may be wrong, but that's very strong in the back of my mind. Well, I know so, Mike yeah. Epley is left-handed. Yeah. Yeah. He was recruited a year ago as a quarterback, but Ken may well be, too. Tuttle goes wide to the left side. Homer has them in the eye. Takes out. This time looking to throw. Quick one to Magwood. He's got it at the 40, 35. Magwood down to the 30-yard line before he is pulled down. And it is Curtis Patterson who is there for Wofford. Magwood just one step away from going all the way. Did Homer do a great job of faking that one off? And I'll tell you, Frank Magwood has some speed in his feet. Mm -hmm. Stock still goes wide to the left side. Magwood splitting off right end. High formation behind Homer Jordan, the quarterback. Ball at the 30-yard line of the Terriers, first and 10. Here is McSwain. He's into the 25-yard line before he is pulled down. Kirk Breland was there for the Wofford Terriers, but a five-yard pickup for McSwain. And it brings about a second and five for the Tigers. Well, Jim, neither one of the tailbacks has broken a big, long one yet, but uh, Austin and McSwain both have performed very, very well this afternoon. Tigers are deep at running back. You mm -hmm. won't see probably one runner dominate this season, but many will pile up yardage. Second down and five at the 25. Again, McSwain, there's the 20. McSwain to the 15-yard line, and he is pulled down there. So Chuck McSwain breaking over left tackle, carrying for a first down. They've spotted it at the 16-yard line. He was hit by Curtis Patterson at that point. Very steady, very consistent play out of all the running backs who've been in today. Mag will come to this side. Uh, 13 minutes to go on this game. Tigers knocking on the door one more time. Stock still left, Magwood to the right. Here's Jordan, handing it off to McCall, who dives straight ahead, gets inside the 15 to about the 14-yard line, where Ronnie Ray is there to spill him. 12.43 remaining in the football game. Tigers on top of the Wofford Terriers, 31-3. I started to tell you earlier, tomorrow, on the Clemson football television stations. You'll see the Danny Forjo. Kendall Alley goes wide to the left side. Double tight end offense. They line up in the eye. Here is Homer Jordan keeping. He's at the 10. He's down to the five yard line and that should be enough for a Tiger first down. Curtis Patterson and Scott Steinmeier finally spilled Homer Jordan. Again, he faked the pitch out to the wide man and carried himself to the five. WFBC Television in Greenville, the anchor station for the Danny Ford Show, joined by WCIV in Charleston, WPDE in Florence, WRDW in Augusta, WOLO in Columbia, and on cable network in Savannah, Georgia, 8.30 Monday night. Try to wing back, pitch back to McSwain, a race to the end zone, Chuck McSwain, touchdown! A five-yard touchdown scamper by Chuck McSwain. Somebody did a beautiful job leading the blocking out there. I missed who it was, Scott. I don't know whether you saw it. It was Jeff McCall, the fullback, who was out in front and threw a beautiful block on the corner. Well, Homer had a hand at all the scoring earlier, and uh, this time McSwain takes it in, and it's 37-3. Big wave week A to try the extra point. The kick is up. The kick is good. Timeout on the field. 11.54 remaining in the game. The score is Clemson 38, Wofford 3.
Again, another efficient drive. Seven plays, 56 yards, three first downs in that. It ended with McSwain going from five yards out. And uh, I guess the big play would have been the pass uh, Homer Jordan to Frank Magwood which uh, gave Clemson a first down at the Wofford College 29-yard uh, line. 11.54 to go in the game. Scott, I would venture a guess that's the last time you'll see Homer Jordan and company this afternoon. I would think so. I think Danny probably will substitute rather freely from now on. Bob Pauling will kick. Lang Wade backed up as the deep receiver for the Wofford Terriers. Pauling approaches the football, is high end over end kick. Going to be grabbed by one of the up backs, that is Craig Best. He gets free to the 20, 25, out to the 30, and down he goes at the 30 yard line. Has some scores at the half. Georgia 17, Tennessee nothing. In the second quarter, Mississippi 12, Tulane nothing. In the second quarter, Eastern Kentucky 14, South Carolina State nothing. Auburn leads TCU 7 to 3, that's in the second quarter. Second quarter, Appalachian 17, Lenore Ryan 6. In the second quarter, Mississippi State 10, Memphis State nothing. Wide left now comes Graves. Thompson at quarterback with Wilson and Gaines in behind. The give is to Gaines, sweeping wide right. Comes up over the 30 to the 34-yard line. And at that point, he is hit down by William Perry. So the pickup is about three yards. It'll bring about a second down and seven. WRHI in Rock Hill, WBCU in Union. Welcome back, folks, to the Clemson Tiger Network, 1981 edition. Good to have you with us. We'll talk about the fine stations on our network throughout this season. David Moore wide to the left side, back to throw Thompson. He's looking over the middle, firing. Man wide open is Wilson. Wilson hit hard, however, and knocked down at the 40-yard line as Roy Brown, sophomore linebacker, popped him good. And it comes up shy of a first down by about a yard. Third and one for Wofford. Ten minutes, 50 seconds remaining in the football game. 38 to three, the Tigers lead. Straight wishbone formation on third and one. The give this, to, oh, the keep by Thompson, and he loses yardage as he tried to skirt outside to the right. His feet went out from under him. Randy Cheek was there to cover on him as he went down, and now it will be fourth down Wofford with the football back at their own 37-yard line and their four yards shy of a first down. Ken Brown will go back deep to receive for the Tigers. Chris Marshall will punt for the Terriers. Marshall awaits the snap. He has it. Gets his kick away. Hits a beauty. Brown backed up to his 19. Sweeps to his right at the 20. Comes up to the 25. A flag goes down, and he is knocked down at the 25-yard line. A 44-yard punt by Marshall. And David Moore was downfield to make the tackle on Ken Brown. But we did have a flag on the play. Right, we got two of them. Um, one out near the 40 and one near the 20. You're right. I, didn't, I missed the one upfield there. Well, they're having a big discussion about this one now. Clipping. Clipping against the Tigers down here. And they're going to take the hold. That's going to cost the Tigers on a holding penalty. Stepped off from the 22. It will now go back to the 12-yard line. So apparently now the they clip... spotted it back at the 11. I'm sorry, Scott. Uh, the clip must have taken place out near the 40 then. Right. Uh, and rather take a penalty stepped off from the 40, the Terriers did the smart thing. Mike Gaskew has checked in at quarterback now. Kendall Alley goes wide to the left side. Gilliard is split right. Jeff McCall along with Cliff Austin in the eye behind Mike Gaskew at quarterback. 38 to three, the Tigers lead this game. We're in the fourth quarter with 10 minutes remaining. Gaskew up under center, takes out. This time is riding it off to Austin. Cliff is hit back around the nine and down he goes at the nine yard line. Good defense that time. Wofford played it very, very well. Have an injured terrier. That is Curtis Patterson. Is it Curtis? No, Tim Moore is the injured Wofford player. He's he's sitting up, appears to maybe just have been stunned on that play or something, Scott. The trainer's his, out there quickly talking with him. His helmet is off. Tim was a linebacker for them last year. They moved him to middle guard this year. He gained uh, some weight. And he's played a 
pretty good football game this afternoon. He just might be worn out. They have played an awful lot of football today. All right. Jim Moore being stretched out there now. They're still working on him, so we have an opportunity with timeout on the field for this time in. The score, Clemson 38, Wofford 3. All right, Moore is up now and and being led to the sidelines. Meanwhile, it's second down Tigers, second and 13, the ball at their own nine yard line. Uh, Tim Moore is going to be OK, it would appear. He came off under his own power. Gaskew, McCall and Brendan quite in the eye now. Here is Gaskew rolling right, looking to throw, being hammed in. Now firing one is complete to Gilliard at the 15. Jerry out of bounds up around the 19 yard line. Piper Nicholson was there to push him out of bounds. That time, Gaskew had to ad lib a little bit. He was looking to go deep that time, but uh, he was chased around a bit and had to find Gilliard crossing over. Did you notice his passing motion? He almost submarined that thing, threw it sidearm uh, because of the defense bearing down on him, but it's first, almost, no, third down, three. Austin McCall in the eye, Gaskew the quarterback, pitch back to Cliff Austin, out over the 20, 25. Austin with a beautiful shoulder hit on the defender, just drove straight over him and has finally bumped out of bounds as Langrier went down in the in the explosion off the shoulder of the young man with the football, Cliff Austin. It's a first down at the 28-yard line. One of the um, Clemson assistant coaches came over a moment ago and wanted to know about how many yards Austin had, and at that point, late in the third quarter, it was near 80, so he has a shot at 100 yards. All right, the ride is off to Cliff Austin again. Straight ahead he goes to about the 33-yard line. Ronnie Ray was there. Barry Langer was there. Austin looks impressive this afternoon, Scott. 1978, you'll recall, as a freshman. He looked awesome at times, but did not play much because the Tigers were so deep in talent. But he then had the injury that really hurt him. He was rookie of the year that year in the ACC, I believe. McCall and Kreit in the eye now. Here's Gaskew taking out. This is Brendan Kreit. He's going to lose a yard back to about the 32 where Kirk Breland pulls him down. 38 to 3, Tigers on top, 8.50 remaining. Here's a halftime score. Pitt leads Illinois 14 to nothing. In the third, Kentucky 21, North Texas State nothing. In the second, Appalachian 24, Lenore Rhine 6. Of course, uh, we'll see Kentucky later on this year. October the 3rd in Lexington. Third and six for the Tigers. The ball at the 32-yard yard, 32 yard line. Gilliard in motion from wing right to left. The ride off to Austin. Fumbles the football, and Wofford recovers at the 39-yard line. The ball was stripped away from Cliff Austin as he came out over the 35. And rolling loose at the 39, it was picked up by John Richardson. He, um, he was not hit down and fumbled the ball. In fact, he was standing up when the ball was fumbled. And... Uh, He's probably a tired young man right now. He, he was looking around, bewildered, where'd the football go? And all of a sudden, Wofford was jumping all over it. All right, Thompson brings out the Wofford Terriers. They're at the 39 of the Tigers. Back to throw on first down, rolling to his right, looking upfield, now firing. This one is going to be incomplete. The intended receiver was Wade Lang down inside the 20. Billy Davis was there along with Vandell Arrington for the Tigers on coverage. And Pickett had a good rush. Edgar Pickett playing a defensive end this year. He was a fullback a year ago. Update on that Georgia-Tennessee game. The Dogs now lead it 24 to nothing in the third quarter. Ooh, Dogs are putting it on them, huh? Wonder what kind of day Herschel's having. I don't know. He was all over Sports Illustrated, Inside Sports, the Sporting News. 
Johnny Majors calls him the most uh, single important player in college football. All right, here is that uh, wing reverse again to Lang, and Lang breaks free across the 30, down to the 25, to the 22-yard line before Billy Davis can hammer him down. Wade Lang shows good speed. I guarantee you the young man can motor. I tell you what, there are about 60,000 people in the stadium who now believe that Wade Lang is a player. And that Wofford is a pretty good football team. Doggone right. 38-3 uh, our score, but Wofford has rolled up some impressive statistics this afternoon. It's at the 23, it is first down. Flags are down all over the place as Thompson gives off to Gaines, and he dives over the right side inside the 15 to about the 12-yard line. Well, but the referee I believe threw this we may have motion on this one. Yeah, the referee threw it. This one's going to come back. <laughs> Clock is at 7.34 remaining in this football game. Next week, the Tigers are in New Orleans where they go against Tulane in the Superdome. Airtime next Saturday night, 8 o'clock, Eastern Daylight Time. Well, there has been some, uh, some concern voiced by several people. How will the Tigers react to playing in a dome stadium? It is different. I, I guess if you look up looking for the football, you do get a different perspective on it. Five-yard penalty for illegal procedure. It's first down and 15 for the Terriers. The ball at their own 28. This time, they ride that reverse again to Menzer. And big play by tackle Dan Benish, who reached out, grabbed him by the shoulder pad, and spins him down for a loss back to the 30. So now it'll be second down and 17 yards to go for Wofford. William Perry just came back into the game. He looks like a bulldozer coming on the field. <laughs> I followed one part way to Clemson today. <laughs> Did I, you really? You're right. He does resemble one. He's as wide as that plow on the front. <laughs> Back to throw Thompson. Looking right, firing right, incomplete, thrown out of bounds. The intended receiver, Mike Taylor, well covered on the left side by Andy Hedden and Hollis Hall. And, of course, the uh, clock has stopped on the incompletion. 6.45 left to go in this game. Andy Turned out to be a decent day for football, although I do see some uh, some clouds around. It doesn't look threatening right now. The sun is out. I think it's a fantastic day for football. It's just beautiful here, and it's great to have the season underway. And every year, once that basketball and baseball at Clemson University wraps up, Scott, it's look forward to football. Yeah, and it seems like a long, long summer. All right, Thompson back to throw. Little screen pass out on the left side, completed to Craig Best. Best gets away and is then really hammered down by Kennard, and we're going to get a flag thrown. I'll tell you something, that official threw a flag from way out of position, Scott. Yes. There were two officials on top of the play, and that was a high hit. He hit him around the neck and hauled him down, but an official who was to the far sideline, a good 40 yards off the play, threw a face mask flag, and that's, mm. that's uncalled for. He's out of position to call that. Well, nevertheless, it's marked off against the Tigers down to the 11-yard line. Well, he was horse-collared, no question yep. about it. Unintentionally, just horse-collared. But to throw a face mask flag from 40 yards off the play is a bad piece of officiating. And Norval Nave, commissioner of ACC officials, is here watching. I'm sure he's grading. I would imagine he'd take notes on that. Well, there's the crowd noise. But Wofford doesn't react. Thompson hands it off to Gaines. He'll try the right side. He is hit hard back around the 11-yard line. Forward progress carried him into the 10. Joey Glenn, Jeff Davis, and Hollis Hall were all there. You don't suppose Virginia Tech would react to crowd noise like that, do you? Nah, Bill Dooley teaches them to ignore it. <laughs> The ball is at the 10-yard line, 547, and the clock is moving left to go in this game. A lot of folks call it the Dooley rule. <laughs> they could be right. Thompson has them down. Wing to the right side, wide receiver to the right. That is Taylor. Here is a pitch back to the wing again. He slides to his left looking to throw, but he'll not throw as he is hammered down. Jeff Davis was the first to get to him. Finally getting him was Jeff Bryant back around the 16-yard line. And the Tiger defense fired up now. Scott, it's beginning to get a little infectious out there. Some yeah. of that enthusiasm is returning to this Clemson team. They played in the first quarter and a half without patting each other on the back, without any celebration. That time, Jeff Davis just mauled Jeff Bryant after he made the tackle. And poor old uh, Lang was at the bottom of that pileup. He wanted to throw that ball, but he just never could stop and get in position to throw it. 
They kept stringing him out. Third down, 14 yards to go. Ball at the 16-yard line. And timeout being asked now by Barry Thompson, the quarterback of the Terriers. Timeout on the field with 4.49 remaining in the game. The score, Clemson 38, Wofford 3. Back in the Valley, 4.49 left to go in this game. Barry Thompson is huddled with head coach uh, Buddy Sasser along the sidelines uh, to get some words of wisdom. Third down and a long way to go. They would have to penetrate the two-yard line for first down. The ball is spotted right now outside the 15. I'm sure they'd, like to, they'd love to score a touchdown because they have had an awful lot of total offense today and only three points on that scoreboard to show for it. Clemson's defense has been tough when it's had to. And Barry. the offense has made the big, big plays. Barry Thompson brings them out with Danny Graves wide to the right side, Lenny Best and Craig Best in the backfield. Thompson to throw over the middle. Was it trapped? I think it was, yes. Tell you what, that was Craig Best. I'm going to tell you something, Scott. The official again was caught a little out of position. The ball did skip a few inches in front of him, but Craig, being a little inexperienced as a freshman, immediately turned and slammed it down, knowing that he had trapped it. Otherwise, he might have gotten away with it because uh, the official was a few yards off the play. It was screened out. Well, it's uh, fourth down, and again, Barry Thompson wants to talk to his coach. So with fourth down and still about 14 yards to go for the Wofford Terriers, I would imagine they're going to go for it here with 4.42 remaining. And with timeout on the field, the score remains. Clemson 38, the Wofford Terriers 3. He might have gotten away with the reception he had. <laughs> Tigers 38, the Terriers 3. Coming down the final few minutes of this football game. It's been a long afternoon for the Wofford players along that sideline. They have a, a lot of things to be uh, proud of, though. They've played extremely well. The offense has been able to move the ball up and down the field. They've had little success, however, in putting the ball into the end zone. Their only scoring came on a field goal in the first period of play. In fact, they scored first in this game, and Clemson has scored the last 38 points. All right, set to go. Thompson brings them up to the line of scrimmage. In motion from the left side goes Wade Lang. Thompson's back to throw on fourth down, going for the big one, and it's touchdown! <laughs> Tight end, Dirk Derrick did a beautiful post pattern that time and a beautiful throw by Barry Thompson. Hit him on the numbers. He beat Anthony Rose on the play. And Wofford has hit pay dirt to make it a 38 to nine game as we have Don Hairston coming on to make it a 38 to 10 or attempt to make it a 38 to 10 game. Tell you what, Thompson went over to the sidelines, got his play down pat and then threaded the needle in there beautifully. It was a good call. Here's Hairston's cry for the point after, the kick is up, the kick is good. So there was time out on the field. The score here at the Valley, Clemson 38, Wofford 10. Four thirty-six left to go. Wofford strikes for the first time since the first quarter 
And they have, they put a touchdown in. Barry Thompson to Derek. A 38-yard uh, or a 16-yard touchdown pass. It's a 38-10 game now as Wofford set to kick it off. 4.36, as we mentioned, and uh, many of the 60,000 faithful, most of them wearing Clemson orange today, beginning to file out. Head for the parking lots, try to avoid that massive traffic jam headed home. A lot of them just stay out there till it gets dark. Having yeah. A, having a few refreshments. About 2.30, uh, well, 2.30. Two-thirds of the people left on the bank are still there. They've had Brown and Chuck McSwain deep. Brown backs up, lets the kickoff hit at the five, and it rolls into the end zone, just rolls into the end zone. Hmm. Can watch that one bounce around a bit. It took one of those high flip-flops out there, and for a moment, it was a bit precarious whether it would make it or not. I think sometimes uh, players uh, tend to forget that after that kickoff travels 10 it's yards. It's free ball. <laughs> it's anybody's. It's going to come out to the 20. Appalachian leads Lenore Ryan 24 0 at the half. Pittsburgh 14, Illinois 6 now. That's in the third quarter. Georgia 24, Tennessee nothing. Still in the third. Tigers out with Mike Gaskew at quarterback. They'll have Cliff Austin and Brendan Kreit in the eye. Brendan Kreit gets the call. He works his way for a yard out to the 21, and that's it. Kentucky 21, North Texas State nothing in the third. Auburn leads TCU 21 10. That's in the second quarter of play. 38 to 10 here, the Tigers over Wofford with 4.15 remaining in the game. Oh, we got some new people trotting off and on for the Tigers. Danny's played a lot of folks this afternoon. All right, here is Gaskew keeping, turning upfield, gets out to about the 24, and that'll be it as he is hauled down at that point. So mark it at the 24-yard line. It'll be third down and six. Don't forget, next week it's a Saturday night game from New Orleans from the Superdome. And for those of you who will not make the trip down to New Orleans, our broadcast time be at 8 o'clock. That's Eastern time. Craig Crawford is a wide receiver to the right side now as Gaskew takes out. Back to throw, looking for Crawford. Now going to have to tuck it in and go straight ahead and gets out to about the 27, and that's all. Crawford was open. Mike did not see him when he was open, and by the time he did spot him, he was well covered. Tackle made by Barry Mason. In now again is Dale Hatcher to do the punting. Backed up deep for the Wofford Terriers will be David Moore to receive this punt. With Along with Renfro. Yeah, we got a flag. Hatcher has hit one of those six-second hangers. Whew. And Renfro waits for it and fair catches at the 20-yard line. He hit a boomer, <laughs> a 50-yarder that had about five and a half to six seconds hang time on it, Scott. Yeah. But there was a flag, as you say. Yeah. The, uh, one of the offensive players trying to get onto the field uh, was not set uh, one count before the snap. And that's the reason it's a motion penalty or a procedure penalty. Uh, Hatcher is at a disadvantage simply because his reputation has preceded him. Well, that's true, too. Uh, everybody expects him to kick the ball 80 yards every time out. He, well, uh, he didn't kick it 80, but uh, he lived up to his reputation as a punter right there. He sure got it in the air, So much so that Buddy Sasser and company decided they would take the ball at the 20 rather than <laughs> have him kick it again. <laughs> 248. Clock has stopped, of course, momentarily. Wofford uh, beginning uh, to get their offense back out on the field now. Barry Thompson threw a touchdown strike just a few moments ago to uh, Derek, 16 yards. And it's 38-10 game now. All right, Thompson ready to go now. Brings Taylor wide to the left side. Has Bossard and Craig Best in that backfield. Now brings Menzer, the wing back, in motion from right to left. Thompson. On a delay give this time to uh, Craig Best, and he's over right tackle, bounces out over the 25 to the 30, but a flag on the play. With a flag down, let's take 15 seconds for a station identification. This is the Clemson Football Network. Don't forget to pick up your tickets at gate one of the stadium today on the way home for the Red Skelton concert to be held at Little John Coliseum. October the 10th, the evening following the Clemson homecoming game. Clemson was offside on that play. Wofford 
very wisely elects to take the play to make it second down and less than a yard. The ball just shy of the 30-yard line. Yeah, it's very, very close. David Moore goes wide to the right side. Menzer is a wing to the left, now comes in motion wide to the left. Thompson takes out, looking to throw, looking for Menzer over the middle. It's going to be intercepted, picked off downfield, and with the football for the Tigers, carrying it into about the 31-yard line. I believe that's number 90, is it not? Yes, sir. That was... Uh, Johnny Rembert. Johnny Rembert makes an interception. The Tigers' second pickoff of the day. Earlier, Terry Kennard had one. And Anthony Peretti, a freshman quarterback out of Florida, is on now for the Tigers. We have substitutions all over the place. McCall and Crite remain in at the running backs, however, and Peretti this time gives to McCall. He breaks up a right tackle at the 10, down to the 7-yard line. <laughs> Curtis Patterson finally caught up with Jeff McCall. That was one of the better running efforts on the afternoon by a Tiger back in one play, Scott. He carried a couple of defenders about five yards with him after he penetrated the 15. Moved it inside the seven now. Tigers again threatening. All right, set to go now. This time the pitch back to Brendan Kreit. Kreit hemmed in, trying to get around the corner. Now retreats, is knocked down at about the 11-yard line. Minute and a half remaining. Barry Mason, Dale Spence there defensively for Wofford. A minute 23 and the clock, of course, is running right now. 38 to 10, Clemson on top of Wofford, and here come the Tigers again. All right, set to go, Peretti the quarterback. Up under center he goes, it's second down. This time, it is touchdown! That is Jeff McCall over right tackle, bursting behind a block on the right side. McCall goes in for the score, and suddenly it becomes a 44 to 10 football game. With still a minute five left to go in this game. And we have Bob Pauling in again to attempt a point after touchdown. Pauling to attempt it. Peretti will hold. As we await the snap. There's the spot. Pauling's kick is up. His kick is good. There's timeout on the field. The score. Clemson 45. Wofford 10. Forty-five to ten. The Tigers back on top by a margin of thirty-five points now, Scott. After Wofford had come back to score that touchdown to make it a thirty-eight to ten game, and the Tigers getting a workout down there in front of the student cheering section. Hey, I just thought of something. Well, What's I hope it? none of the assistant coaches are listening. They weren't here on that last drive. Maybe no. Peretti called the plays, huh? Maybe he did. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who called them. If he did, he looked pretty good. The coaches had left the box. After that last Wofford touchdown, Igwe Buike's long kick is going to be fielded down around the three, dropped and picked up by Wade Lang, and he's out to the five, skirting to his left, up to about the seven, and down he goes. Chased down by Kenny Brown. 55 seconds left in the football game. Here at the Valley, the Tigers with a successful home opener before 60,000 fans here today taking on a determined Wofford Terrier group that just found itself outmanned after the halftime whistle blew. You could almost tell it in the second half. Uh, they were forced to go and still are with pretty much their first team. And uh, it's humid down there, temperature in the 80s, and they're just getting worn down. Barry Thompson has Bossard and Craig Best in the backfield. He'll split Taylor to the left side, brings Menzer, the wing back, in motion from right to left. Thompson on a delay, giving to Craig Best. He'll fight his way out to the 10. That'll be it. As down he goes, across defensively for the Tigers this time to make the play. 
was Jim Scott, a defensive tackle, sophomore out of Alexandria, Virginia. So it is second down, about seven yards to go for the Wofford Terriers. The ball at their own 10-yard line, 30 seconds remaining in the game. Clock continues to tick down. Next week, Tulane at the Superdome, 8 o'clock, daylight time, our broadcast time. Thompson this time rides it off to Bossard. He goes straight up the middle for a couple. And that may be the final play of this football game as the clock ticks relentlessly below 10 seconds now. Eight Nick. seconds remaining. That ought to be it. Now five for the crowd council off. And that is it from the Valley here this afternoon where the Clemson Tigers have won the opener of the 1981 football season. And they do it by defeating the Wofford Terriers. Final score, Clemson 45, Wofford 10.